James Rock Show. You're watching the Mike James Rock Show. Right, it's Dan from the Mike James Rock Show. I'm going to get this lovely human from uh, Lost Society to introduce himself. <laughs> What's up? I'm Samuel Batter from Lost Society, and it's a pleasure to be here. Well, I've got to be honest, for a hot sec, when you guys released the last album, I wondered if somebody had taken over your name <laughs> and just released something completely different, because it, it sounded just slightly different to... I get the, you, I get you. And you guys have had massive success, like the, the style, um, well, sound changes literally just raised you up. What was the reasoning behind it? Like, um, was it just we we want to make this music and then it happened to go really well? Or you know what? I'm gonna give you like I feel like it, it might be a boring answer, but you know the the whole truth basically with everything is that we don't really think about anything because <laughs> I mean you know the the truth is that when I pick up a guitar or our other guitarist picks up a guitar, it's very difficult to kind of dictate exactly what we're gonna do. Yeah. It's just when you start playing, something's gonna happen, and you gotta kind of roll with it. Yeah. Because I feel like if you start start telling yourself that you have to do something certain because someone expects it of you, that's when you're kind of going to the wrong direction. So for me, No Absolution sounded like a very natural progression from what Braindead had already kind of brought yeah. a glimpse of. And because, you know, we're, we're the kind of guys that we wear our influences on our sleeves. And that's for that. us, you know, it just so happens that, you know, when we were younger, you know, we love, obviously, we love Metallica and we love Slayer, we love stuff like that, but we love all kinds of music. And that's been really important to me to be able to bring all of it out there and, uh, rather than just say, you know what, we're going to stick to this and I'm not kind of allowed to do anything else. Yeah. For, for me, music represents the ultimate form of liberty. Yeah. So if I'm suddenly going to tell myself I'm not allowed to sing or I'm not allowed to introduce this kind of melody because it's it's not typical, that's yeah. when I'm selling out. Well, the funny thing is, is you, you've done it at the right point because if you did a couple albums more of like the more thrashy stuff, then people would be a bit more inclined to say, you know, why are you style changing? Whereas I feel you've pulled a trivium, like second album, do something completely different, show people, no, you don't know what to get from us each time. Well, you know, I mean that, and also the fact that I feel like if you feel like doing something with your own music, why wouldn't you do it? Because you know, in the end of the day, you know, 30 years from now, I want to listen back to our records and feel the emotions that I felt yeah. like during that period of time. Hell yeah. And every record for us, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a, a representation of our emotions at that that moment in life yeah. and you know the last couple of years have been pretty fucking weird in many ways <laughs> and it's also just kind of us showing like you know what we love metal but we also love listening to fucking you know Nine Inch Nails Halsey My Chemical Romance anything because yeah. music is music and I think you're not allowed to put any chains on what you're allowed to listen to and what not well sometimes the internet trolls will disagree with you and they'll try and keep you and they're the loudest ones that's the <laughs> <Right>? thing <laughs> <laughs> there's only like a tiny group of trolls but they scream louder than everybody exactly. Exactly, but then when you're in situations like this where you physically see the people enjoying the music, yeah. then that kind of reminds you like, you know what? Because in the end of the day, I mean, we write music for ourselves, but if someone else likes it, fucking that's great, man. <laughs> and so are you hoping that you're gonna get sort of the same caliber of names to go out on tour with from more the new metal scene? Cause you've gone out with some fairly big names from Thrash. Absolutely, man, absolutely. Yeah. And, and big ups to all of them because they have been the ones who have taken us on our first tours. You know, we love Exodus. That tour was amazing. <laughs> it was fantastic. Our biggest European tour that we had done at yeah. that point, you know, Children of Bodom, they took us out to North America <laughs> for the first time. And we're here, we're super lucky. And we, we realized that yeah. because we're all, we've always been the kinds of guys that we're super grateful for everything we get to do. You know, whether we play a show for one person or a thousand people or a million people, yeah. we're always going to give it our all because we're so fucking lucky to be in that situation. So, you know, the future can hold anything. I literally don't know what's going <laughs> to be happening next year or the year after that. But what we're going to do is exactly what we're doing up till now and work our asses off. I'm hoping that next time you're going to do like a black metal album just to <laughs> keep everybody Honestly, on their toes. I think the coolest thing, like talk about a band like Bring Me the Horizon, right? which is one of those bands where you literally have no idea what they're going to do next. And I fucking love that. Yep. You know, I, I think that's a cool thing because nowadays I feel like there's a lot of bands that are like, well, you know what? We've been doing this for 20 years. We cannot do anything else. Let's do the same thing. And essentially what a lot of those bands are doing is just releasing the same record, but a bit worse than the previous one. Right. And I mean, you know, it could be that that's just my opinion, but you know, I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather release something totally different if I feel like it. Yeah. But if you got, again, it sounds like you guys just go into the writing and see 
what happens. So exactly. It would be hilarious if one of you just turns up in corpse paint and be like, right, this is what I'm doing now. <laughs> exactly. But the thing is, I mean, I, I, I think of myself, I'm 27 right now. I think it would be a shame if the things that I've done when I'm 25 will dictate what I do for the next 50 years. Right. I don't want to be a 75 year old going, I wish I would have brought in a melody. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, well, look, it's been an absolutely awesome chat. We haven't covered much apart from the style change, but I got to be honest, it's because it interested me so much. Oh, dude, thank you for asking. And I love talking about this, honestly, because it clears up a lot of things. Well, this one's one for people that are as nerdy as me and go, why did you change your style? <laughs> <laughs> Here's to you all. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you, man. Cheers. <laughs> Welcome to the My James Rock Show.